The matte choker effect is found under the matte category, and this is used for filling in holes on alpha channels that have been keyed out. Now I've taken this clip of Shia LaBeouf and actually keyed it out already, and I purposely did a bad job. I wanted holes to show up inside of him. So if I switch this to my alpha view, actually, if I go right here and say alpha, you can see that this matte is not solid whatsoever. There's lots of gray in here. Part of his watch has a hole in it. And that's what matte choker is really designed to try and fix. Now, in my experience, keying effects like key light have plenty of tools built in to handle this without the need for matte choker. But I'm gonna show you how it works anyway. I'm gonna drag it out here and immediately it's going to change the way my alpha channel looks. Let's go back to RGB and see that it is making a pretty big difference on what's happening. Now I did a lot of research on how this effect is supposed to work and the After Effects user guide tells you to use it in a way that it does not default to at all. If we look at the controls, there's geometric softness, choke and gray level softness one, and then geometric softness, choke and gray level softness two. So the way that you're supposed to use this effect is actually first expand your alpha channel or spread the mat out and then use the second choke using these first controls and then choke the mat or shrink it down by the same amount. So this choke one value shouldn't be set to a positive number if we're following the way that the After Effects user guide tells you to use the effect. Instead, I should be going in a negative direction until all of those holes are filled. So if I switch back to my alpha, you can see all of those semi-transparent pixels are gone. It actually did a really great job. If I turn this off and back on, you can see that it just filled everything in. Now I still have a hole in that watch, so I'm gonna bring that back until it's gone, but there is a side effect of it filling in the gaps between his fingers, which is not something I wanted. And this is kind of a limitation that I've found with this effect and I haven't been able to really get around. One thing I could do is turn down the geometric softness one. If I turn that all the way down to zero, everything's gonna get really blocky and really harsh. This isn't all that great, but if I switch this back to alpha, you can see very clearly why it's not great. It's because it's removing all of the softness. But in addition to that geometric softness, we also have gray level softness. This is literally just a feather or a blur basically for the edge of the mat. And if I go too high, we're gonna lose a lot of what it was recovering with that choke. So this geometric softness was defaulted to four, but that removes all these gaps in his fingers. So I'm gonna turn that down to a lower number and then maybe turn the gray level softness up just slightly. It's still leaving a hole in the watch, but I might be able to get away with that. Now, the next thing the After Effects user guide tells you to do is use the second set of controls to choke the mat in an equal but opposite direction. So my geometric softness should probably be the same value. So I'll just copy that over. And the gray level softness should probably also be the same, so I'll copy that over. And then the choke needs to be the inverse of this number right here. So instead of negative 101, I'm gonna type 101. And then I'll turn that effect off and back on, and you can see what it's done. It's filled in a lot of those semi-transparent pixels, and it's closed the gaps in some of the other holes. Right here, for example, there's some green spill on his tattoo on his arm. Without it, there's a big hole. This sealed it up. Now the only other thing you can do with this effect is the iterations value. And what this is going to do is iterate the spreading and then choking of the mat. So if I change this from a one to a two, it's going to run through these twice. First, it's going to spread the mat, then choke it, then spread it, then choke it. And it doesn't really look all that different, but if we go to an area where there are some fine details, I'll show you the difference between one and two. I can do that again and iterate this as many times as I want. I don't exactly know the reason why you would wanna do this. It really is just rounding off all of these areas that had fine details in it, and we're now seeing more of that green, but you could try to remove that with maybe another instance of key light. If I duplicated this, moved it down here and reset it, and then I'll just eyedropper that green right in between his fingers. Now it's removing just that. I'll probably need to increase my clip white so that comes back in and change the replace method to hard color. That works a little bit better on this clip. But that's one way that you can take a few passes to make a green screen key a little bit cleaner. Going back to what I originally said though, key light is such a robust tool, it's very unlikely that you will need to use matte choker to refine your matte. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't know about it because it doesn't have to be used exclusively for green screen footage. You could apply it to any design to create a softened alpha channel. 
I could turn that geometric softness up to kind of eat away at my logo and make some corners more round. Or I could even apply it to some text and see what happens to that. Maybe this will be a little bit more obvious if I use a different font like Abolition. This is essentially going to round off the corners of my text and I could make that as extreme as I want. So this is before and after. But that's it for Matt Choker. It's a nice little effect to know about. So play around with that and see what you can come up with. But that's everything you need to know about Matt Choker. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.